Good morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. Come on in. Grab a seat. Say hi if you won't tell. <laughs> Yummy. Some days the tea is better than the others. How are you? Let's see what we got. We are live. We are live. We are live. Who's here? Elma. Good morning, Mom. Good morning, Mom. How are you? Elma's here. She had a big weekend. Wedding in the family. Beautiful. Thanks for coming to church, Alma. You're the first one here after partying all weekend. <laughs> Good to see you, Ma. Hope you're well. It's been a week. It's been a week. So, as usual, my clocks in my house has different times. My computer clock says it's 9.57. My cell phone says it's 10.01. So, while I have a minute, I'm going to go ahead and share this where it needs to go. Alma, give me a minute. We're going to put this right here on our home page. I'm even going to write Happy Sunday on it today there we're good how is everybody hope you had a good week <sighs> well it was a good week it was an exciting week who's here hi Laura oh just about rested, are you, Alma? I bet that was that that wedding that her granddaughter had was an event. It wasn't just a wedding. My goodness, I'd be pooped out too, and I don't even drink either. Good to see you here, Laura. I hope you're doing well down there, Florida. Your hubby. Good to see you. Welcome to church. Somebody else is here, but I guess they don't want to say hi. Come on in, grab a seat. You got time for some coffee, it looks like. I don't know if I'm early or everybody else is late, but here we are in church. Weather is getting very nice here in Arizona. We look forward to this all year round. So we're prepared for the snowbirds to come out. I seen a few yesterday. Went to a little get together at Joe and Denny's house. I was a little late and then I had to leave for the game. Watched the last game of the season for the Diamondbacks yesterday. My poor guys, they did so good. They, they, The Phillies got them yesterday, so um, we're out of it. They have uh, played their hearts out. Congratulations to our Diamondback team. They have a heck of a team, and next year, next year we're going to the World Series. This They came this close, and I had a lot of fun. Um, I was a little annoyed that all the playoff games, the announcers were in Spanish on my channel, and I don't have the channel that they played in English. A number of my friends offered to help me out with their ideas, but I don't know. It, it was... Uh, it was a fun, fun season. Now I'm going to cancel my FUBO because I only got it for the Diamondbacks, and I usually watch the World Series. I will, because I do enjoy it. It just won't be as much fun. 
fun. <laughs> anyway, way to go, Diamondbacks. Here's for you. Thank you for a fun season. I um, want to thank Alma. She sent in her donation. Here's the address, you guys, for you to send in your donation for our toy and food drive. We also have it on our church page. Um, we also have PayPal, AJCowboyChurch at gmail.com is our PayPal. Please help. We are up to um, $325 now. We got a month to go. So if you're going to send in money, please do so. Um, if you're coming to church, we'll receive it at November 19th at Church in the Park. Yay! Real happy to have church in the park. And um, I know people enjoy it. I do too. I, um, I'm lining up the music. So, plan on being there. Good morning, Franny. How are you, Franny? Nice to see you, Gary, Diane, Jeff. Good morning, Jeff. Humidity is fading in Florida. Isn't that nice? I didn't know that Florida humidity faded. I thought it was humid all the time. That's nice for you. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Fran. Good morning, Gary. How are you? Thanks for coming to church, you guys. I have to refresh this, I guess, to see who's here and who's commenting. Good morning, Christy. How you been, girl? Nice to see you. How's your lovely daughter? You're doing so good raising that girl. Wow. Nice to see you. Um, our toy drive in the park. You can send in um, donations between now and then. You can bring them to church if you're going to be here. And Dollar General has once again agreed to collect donations from us. You can go in and purchase something from them. They have coloring books, they have crayons, they have toys, and soon they'll be getting in more toys. So I will have a sign out to them next week and they'll set it up in the store, a box. This is the Apache Junction Dollar General on the trail over by, um, by uh, you know where it is, by the Old Village Inn. Gosh, AJ, it's by the old this or that, by Ace Hardware and uh, Beals. So please help out our toy drive. We try to make it as easy as we can. Every little bit helps. And, you know, kids don't understand. What do you mean, Mom? We don't have any money for Christmas. Santa Claus don't need money, Mom. Right? So please help out. Thank you, Elma, and to all those who've already... Fran, who's already given their donations. I will be giving my own donation um, this week. So, yes, I pitch in as well. And um, thank you very much. It's, it's our biggest thing of the year. And what we collect goes to the Apache Junction Police Department, who helps people and children here in AJ that need help. Uh, any non-perishable food items by the way we can take when we're in the park they come up on sale right now at fries three for five dollars for uh beefaroni and ravioli boy is that a treat to receive when you get free food from different organizations so um that goes to genesis project and as you know they've served over a million meals in their history so anyway please help for uh, November 19th is church in the park maybe some of you can come out that haven't been before it'd be great to meet you in person um, and uh, Christmas Eve is our Christmas service in the park and Easter Sunday is March 31st so those are our three church services I believe I have a musician lined up. I do like to have um, uh, backup 
musician so Donnie Grubb if you're out there Christy if you see him tell him I'm asking about him maybe this year we could get Donnie to do a few songs for us at church all right um I want to ask for prayer prayers off the top for Max's daughter she's I don't know if she's here yet or not but her daughter was um, rushed to the hospital this morning she's a um, an adult her daughter but please keep Max's daughter Stephanie in your prayers and we're not sure I don't know do you see Max so far I'm not seeing Max here um, but keep Stephanie in your prayers and a friend of mine on Facebook Warren Marcus um, I got to be friends with him on Facebook through another friend of mine Rick Amato if you ever saw the show it's supernatural he is one of the producers or he's involved in that show I'm not exactly sure what his title is but he's a great very religious man he's Jewish and he's part of the Jews who believe in Jesus so please keep Warren Marcus in your prayers whenever we have prayer requests I know he joins in with us so he's very ill in the hospital right now prayers for Warren and Stephanie um, and I guess prayers for myself I won't be having church next Sunday and this snuck up on me I have that surgery next Friday and I have to go back in Monday for whatever they do after the surgery it's for my nasal problems um, maybe I won't need these anymore but anyway I am having that done next Friday so I just think I will not be well enough on Sunday to have church so I apologize but no church next Sunday okay and I'll be posting something I want to thank my friends my two friends who stepped up to help me Tim has offered to give me a ride to both my appointments what a nice guy he you might see him on here every now and then um, he usually watches eventually <laughs> on uh, the, the service so thank you Tim and Leanne my other girlfriend is going to be staying with me if I need somebody they say have somebody so this is next week no church and I'm sorry um, but after that we'll see where we're at I think I'm being led to do the um, background talk about the disciples because after today's message it goes into Jesus picks the disciples so if you share this message now's a good time because I'm about to say the joke of the day all right are you ready I'll give you a minute I'll take a sip of my tea and we'll go into the joke of the day I know some of you just stay for that it's coming up all right you had your chance here we go hi Laura good morning Jeff a fairy tale wedding Elma Diane, Christy. Our church is growing. It is. Christy asks, how can we drop off items? Um, you could come to the church on November 19th. I will have my truck there and come to church, Christy, and drop it off there or go to Dollar General and um, pick something up there and they will have a box in there just buy it and leave it at the store and we'll pick it up there thank you for asking um, okay yeah thank you Fran I figured I wouldn't feel good um, I've had enough surgeries to know okay and Alma said to remind everybody that clocks are changing so whatever where you're changing let's see spring forward fall back the time of church will go back an hour I guess be like Arizona don't change your clocks it's easier that way okay 
I think I'm caught up with all of that. Time for joke of the day. It's a few little ones. To me, drink responsibly means don't spill it. <laughs> and they say age 60 might be the new 40, but 9 p.m. is the new midnight. <laughs> Oh, and the older I get, the earlier it gets late. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? What? It's 8 o'clock? Why am I so tired? I'm going to bed. <laughs> All right? And when I say the other day, I could be referring to any time between yesterday and 15 years ago. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? And I can remember being able to get up without making any sound effects. <laughs> yeah. And um, there's a bunch of these, you guys. And we need to remember, if you lose a sock in the dryer, it comes back as a Tupperware lid that doesn't fit any of your containers. <laughs> And here's one you can try next week. If you are sitting in a public place and a stranger takes the seat next to you, just stare straight ahead and say, did you bring the money? <laughs> and finally, and I'm going to quit. There's more, but I'm going to save them for another day. Whenever you ask me what I'm doing today and I say nothing, it doesn't mean I'm free. It just means I'm doing nothing. <laughs> and I wait for that day to happen because it doesn't happen very often. <laughs> okay. All right. I hope you liked one or two of them. I'm going to put my phone down now. Take a sip of my tea. You got a second to take a sip of your coffee or go freshen it up. And now I want to ask you to open your hearts and clear your minds to receive God's message. Dear Lord, you are an awesome God and we thank you for all you have given us. We can hardly look around and not see the wonder of your majesty. We ask your guidance in our daily lives so we live the way you want us to live, Lord. We ask blessings on all those hearing your word right now. And we ask you, Lord, to touch our leaders' hearts. And Lord, of course, we ask for you to help the people over in Israel and, and, and squelch the war that is brewing, that is going, and, and protect the, pe the people, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 So, we are talking about the miracles of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Um today we are we are talking we are in Luke 6 6 through 11. Now this story put my phone down. This scripture was written by Matthew, Mark and Luke, all three of them. And, and I found it quite interesting. Things change a little bit between them, but over and overall, overall, it's the same. On another Sabbath day, a man with a deformed right hand was in the synagogue while Jesus was teaching. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees were watching Jesus closely, of course. If he healed the man's hand, 
They planned to accuse him of working on a Sabbath. But Jesus knew their thoughts. And he said to the man with the deformed hand, Come and stand in front of everyone. So the man came forward. Then Jesus said to his critics, I have a question for you. Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath? Or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save a life or destroy it, he asked. He looked around at them one by one. And he looked at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hearts. When Jesus looks at you, he looks at your heart, not the shell. He looks right into your heart. And he looked around at them angrily and was deeply saddened by their hard hearts. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand. So the man held out his hand and it was restored. At this, the enemy, enemies of Jesus were wild with rage and began to discuss what to do with them. And they met with the supporters of Herod to plot how to kill Jesus. Why? Why? I, I just can't help but say why. Well, the Pharisees were a religious group that followed Old Testament laws. And they were highly respected in the community. But they hated Jesus because he challenged their proud attitudes and dishonorable motives. So, if you notice, this time, this man did not come up to Jesus and ask for a healing. But Jesus took notice of him in the crowd, and his heart was so, Jesus, all he wanted to do was good. All he did do was good. Like when the woman was in the, the temple, and Jesus saw this woman all hunched over and she couldn't stand up, remember? He healed her. And she wasn't there to ask. And he did the same with this man. He saw his shriveled up hand. And it was his right hand. And so did the Pharisees. And the Pharisees observed that Jesus began to take notice of this man with the shriveled up hand. And knew what was coming next. They knew that Jesus was going to heal him. And they had their chance. And therefore, their badness, with their badness, they anticipated his goodness. They knew Jesus was about to cure him. And this started them putting their stumbling block in the way of him doing good. Asking him, oh, but Jesus, isn't it against the law? to heal on the Sabbath day? Isn't it against the law to work on the Sabbath? Isn't healing work, Jesus, they asked him? And the Sabbath rules say that people could not be helped on the Sabbath unless their lives were in danger. Well, we know that Jesus healed several times on the Sabbath. And none of these were an emergency. The woman I just talked about who was all bent over and couldn't stand up straight. And Jesus called her forward to stand up. And she did. This man, hold out your hand, is all he said. And it was, he was healed. 
he didn't make a big deal out of it. He didn't pray over it. He just said, hold out your hand. And if Jesus had waited another day, he would have been submitting to the Pharisees authority, showing that their petty rules were equal to God's law. And if he had healed the man on the Sabbath, the Pharisees would claim that Jesus broke the law. You know he would. They're already, they're already testing him. They're already teasing. Oh, Jesus, but wait, can, can you work on the Sabbath? I don't, I don't know. I don't, Jesus, tell us, can you? And these men were supposed to be religious men. Now ain't that something? Ironically, these same men were breaking God's law by plotting the murder of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Right? Isn't that one of the laws of God? Thou shalt not kill? Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Pharisee. Is it against God's law? Is it against the law? to plot a killing on the Sabbath? I'm just asking, I don't know. And Jesus knew all this, he knew it. But what we need to know right here at this juncture of the message is the best time to reach out to someone is when they need help. Don't wait. Somebody calls you for help. You can see somebody needs help. Do you help them or do you say, oh, gosh, I'd like to help, but I, I don't know. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to do something wrong and then I'm in trouble. Well, you know what? That's where the Samaritan law comes in. If you help someone, you're protected. Whether you help them for the good or your help cause them more harm, you are protected by the Samaritan law which is named after the Good Samaritan story. You know that story. So the best time to reach out to someone is when they need help. And Jesus knew this. He saw this man. He saw he needed help. It, it, it's pretty dang difficult to work with just one hand. Everybody adjusts, but Jesus had the power and the wherewithal and he saw it, so while he was there, he was going to take care of it right now. That's what we need to do. Take care of it right now. Write the check right now for our toy drive because the time is now. We only have a month. Okay? Whatever you can give. $5 will be welcome. $10. Whatever you can afford. Please help us. It's for the kids. And the time is now, Scripture says. And then Jesus looked around and saw their hearts, and he looked at them one by one. How would you feel if Jesus looked into your heart? What would he see if he looked into your heart? Would he see a nice, clean heart, willing to help? Or would he see evil in your heart? Jesus was angry about the Pharisees and their uncaring attitude. And anger itself is not wrong. We've seen Jesus angry a few times in scripture. So anger itself is not wrong. It depends on what makes us angry and what we do with our anger. Too often we express our anger in selfish and harmful ways. You fight back, don't you? Do you fight back? Maybe, maybe not. That's what makes wars, people. <laughs> Anger. Somebody does something to get something, somebody mad, and pretty soon bombs are flying. God bless those over in the war zone right now. And our military who are all over this earth fighting evil. By contrast, Jesus expressed his anger by correcting a problem. He healed the man's hand. He was angry. 
He could have just he could have just went off on them. He could have done anything he wanted. I mean, honestly, he was God and he could have struck all those Pharisees dead right there, right now, couldn't he? I don't think Jesus killed anybody while he walked this earth. He certainly had the power. But that's not how he works. He expressed his anger in this towards these Pharisees by correcting the problem. He healed the man's hand in spite of the Pharisees testing him, trying to trick him to catch him into doing something wrong, if you will. Show us your hand, he said, and it was already done. Boom. His hand was fine. Look. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Oh, oh praise God. So what we hear in this part of the scripture is we need to use our anger to find constructive solutions rather than tearing people down or starting war, right? Years ago, I was in a neighborhood and my children were uh, little. All right, let's go on here. I'm sorry. Um, and in the school zone, we had trucks coming down through the school zone, semi-trucks, semi-trucks. And we, we, a little boy was hit by a car in the crosswalk and then after that, I'm seeing all this, so I took action to get a new ordinance in Mesa to keep trucks out of residential areas, especially school zones. I mean, big semis coming down, they could barely fit through the signs on the road. So I was angry, but I took my anger and did something constructive. I'm just saying, that was many, many years ago, but... It was kind of cool. That's the story that came to mind when I read Use Your Anger to Find Constructive Solutions. And these Pharisees were more concerned about protecting their laws than helping a person from painful suffering. But they asked here, isn't it against the law? Not that Jesus would teach them, but so they could accuse him. They hated him. If he should say that it was lawful to heal on the Sabbath day, they would have accused him of contradicting the fourth commandment to keep holy the Sabbath. The religious leaders were more concerned with the negativity, what rules would be broken, what activities should not be done on the Sabbath. Can you believe it? They, they, they saw a miracle in front of their very eyes. How could they have been so blinded, so blinded as to not be in awe of what they just witnessed. I don't understand. It boils down to hatred and jealousy and, and being stuck in the old fashioned way of the old ways of the Old Testament. And how could they not see that God was standing in their presence healing people? How many healings did they see? And all they did was get angry. I don't understand. Well, I do understand, but oh my gosh. And Jesus was just being positive, doing good, helping those in need. This man didn't even come up to him and ask for help. Unlike 
all the people, remember? All the people who followed him for three days and, and laid their sick in front of them. And, and Jesus healed every single one of them. Of whatever it was. Whatever it was, be they blind, be they deaf, be they crippled. This man with with the shriveled up hand, the woman with the with the, with the bent over hunched up back. Just like Jesus, where is that? Jesus healed this man. Are you are with positivity? with his power. He didn't do it to show off for the Pharisees or for the people in the temple. He was in the temple teaching, which is what he did. He taught in the temple. He taught on the hill. He taught from the boat. Wherever he was, Jesus taught. And whatever Jesus saw, Jesus cured. Jesus cured without even knowing the woman who reached out, reached out from a crowd and barely touched his robe and was healed. And Jesus felt the healing going out of him. Remember that story? And this man was just there. His faith was good. Obviously, his heart was good. And Jesus was there. And Jesus cured him out of the kindness and goodness of his heart. What about you? Are you more concerned about what people should not be doing than you are about advancing God's kingdom? You know, uh, a few years ago we had people in our church that were more concerned about where the church's money was and decided to accuse rather than sitting down and having a conversation and finding out what they thought was not true. If Jesus was there and could see into those kind of hearts, what would he do? He would do what he does. He would do what is right and what is good, which he always did. All right, and is your way of being a Christian the only right way? Your way or the highway? Uh, there are many different kinds of Christian churches, and God allows many different kinds of churches. Uh, we need to be sure to respect what other Christian churches do. It's not up to us to say, oh, but you know what they do, and oh, there's that church over there, you know what they do. You might not agree with it, but to them it's the right thing. And as long as they're not killing people or maiming people or doing anything bad or evil, leave them alone and mind your own business, okay? The Pharisees thought their, their religious system had all the answers. Their church had all the answers. They knew. And they could not accept Jesus because he didn't fit into their system. Well, beware of thinking that your, you or your church has all the answers. I never claim that Cowboy Church has all the answers. Cowboy Church is just okay with me. It's great for me. I love Cowboy Church. I was raised Catholic. Now I'm a Cowboy Church pastor. I could never have been a priest in the Catholic Church because, well, at least last time I was there, they don't allow women to be priests. I was a Eucharistic minister. I was a teacher, but I could not say the Holy Mass. And that's their business. Now I can, and I do, and I love it. And I don't think our church has all the answers. I just think it has all the answers for us, right? No religious system is big enough to contain 
Jesus Christ completely or to fulfill perfectly all that he desires for this world. Christianity is the most positive force to ever hit this planet. Jesus' enemies were furious. And not only had he read their minds, but he exposed the hatred in their hearts. And ironically, their hatred combined with their zeal for the law drove them to plot a murder to kill Jesus. What was going on in their heads? How can they sit there and accuse him of healing a man and then walk out and say, we got to do something about him? We. Let's get with Herod because Herod and the Pharisees were enemies. And then they joined forces against Jesus. <laughs> and so now let's talk about the miracle itself, which is what we're here for today. Jesus said to the man, and this is the way Matthew Henry said it, stretch forth thy hand, exert thyself the best as you can. And as he did, it was restored perfectly, just like his other hand, perfectly. This, as the other cures, had spiritual significance. By nature, our hands are also withered. We are utterly unable by ourselves to do anything that is good. If it weren't for God, we would belong to the other team. We would belong maybe on the Pharisees team. Maybe the devil was leading them. The devil was certainly in their mean hearts. It is only Jesus, by the power of his grace, that cures us. He heals the withered hand by putting life into the dead soul. And it works in both to will and to do. Jesus, all he said was, hold out your hand. In order to cure, he commands us to stretch forth our hands to improve our natural powers and do as best as we can to stretch out our hands in prayer to God. This is us stretching out our hands. Jesus says, come to me. Jesus says, pray, stretch out your hands. To stretch them out and grab a hold of your faith. Now, this man could not stretch out his withered hand by himself. Just like Lazarus could not come out of the grave by himself. Now, could he? Jesus said to Lazarus, come out. And he did. But with Lazarus, it was a big deal. And he prayed because he had many non-believers there watching. And Jesus commanded him to come out. And Jesus bid the man, Jesus asked the man with the withered hand, help me out here a little bit. Stretch out your hand, do it the best you can. I know it hurts, but do it. And this was the man with the withered hands accepting God, doing what he was asked to do, doing his part for his cure. Stretch out your hand. Lazarus, come out of the grave to the woman, stand. To the woman with the daughter, with the demon, your faith has healed your daughter. Go home. She's fine. Every person he healed, hundreds and hundreds, picking them out from a crowd, 
them coming up to him in a crowd, lowering a man into the middle of the room where Jesus was for a healing. God commands us to do what we are not able to do. His commands are no more absurd or unjust than his command to this man with the withered hand. Stretch forth your hand, he said. For with the command, there is also a promise of grace. And grace is given by the word. And you are hearing the word right now. Those who perish are as inexcusable as this man would have been if he had not attempted to stretch forth his hand. So if he had not stretched forth his hand, maybe he wouldn't have been healed. He had to do his part. But those who are saved have nothing to boast of than those than this man had of contributing to his own cure. He contributed by stretching forth his hand, by reaching out, by showing them. Here's my hand. You want me? Here, Lord. Here, Lord. So many are indebted to the power and grace of Christ. Miracles happen. God knows all of our needs. But he asks us to do our share. He asks us to help ourselves. Don't just pray and wait. Do your part. Stretch out your hands to God. Put your hands together in prayer to God for your healing, whatever it is, whether it be an illness or help with your family, prayers for whatever your needs are. Do miracles still happen today? I would say so. Healing and other miracles are still found in the church today. We saw this every time Jesus healed someone. And miracles strengthen faith. Healing and other miracles, miracles are still found in the church today. Maybe they're not always dramatic and aren't always spoken of publicly. Maybe because those who experience miracles hold them very sacred. It's between them and God. You may want to look for miracles in your life or the lives of your family members or ancestors and praise God and thank God. You may have witnessed a miracle and not even know it. Have you witnessed a cure? You were looking at a miracle. I was told I should be alive today. and God cured me. I'm thankful. I did my part. I did what the doctor told me to do. I took the chemo. I had the surgery. I prayed like crazy. Constant prayer. When, uh, when I was going through chemo, we had laid sod in my backyard. So to do, do something to get me out of the house, I would go and I would water the grass and I would pray every day. 15, 20 minutes, however long I could stand up to do it. And one day as I was doing it, I stopped for a minute in the middle of my prayer and I thought, Oh, dear Lord. I am praying for me. I am praying for my health. I'm not praying for the grass to grow <laughs> and be green. Amen, Jesus. <laughs> and here I am. And the grass, oh, heck yeah, it grew. It's beautiful. <laughs> 
so do your share. Miracles happen. Let's pray for a miracle in our church. There's someone in our church that needs a miracle. Let's pray for them. And I want to ask you right now, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, now is the time. Now is the time. And we're, we want you to accept him as your Savior. Ask forgiveness of your sins. If you're not quite sure what a sin is, ask him to lay it on your heart, and he will. And then he'll tell you to go and sin no more. And that's all you got to do. And we're going to pray for that right now because it is time for our prayer circle. And this is our prayer circle. This is where we come and lay our request at the feet of the Lord and give thanks for answered prayers. Dear Lord, we pray for the lost souls. We pray we can bring them into our, the church and accept you as their Lord and Savior, Lord. We pray for all those battling cancer or any illness, Lord. We pray for a miracle, for a cure, Lord. We pray they reach out for you and do what they can to help themselves, Lord. We pray for those who are living in an abusive home, Lord. Please touch the heart of the abuser and make them stop. And keep those being abused safe, Lord. And for all those things that lie silent in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now, let us join together. Let's see what's happening here. If you have any prayer requests, please feel free to go ahead and post them. You can send them to me. If you want a prayer request posted, please let me know. And prayers for a little baby named Blaine who has leukemia, two years old. And then I saw another little four-year-old girl who's very, very ill and needs our prayers. We pray for a healing. Okay. And now, let us join hands virtually and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 Well, everybody, that's it for this week. I'll see you in two weeks, okay? And in two weeks, the time will be different. We'll be an hour earlier for everybody, but... Those of us that live in Arizona, everything is still the same. 10 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. If you change your clock, come here an hour earlier than usual. Okay, Debbie Tier, Bert. Hello. Hello. So, thank you for coming to church. God bless you. Have a great week. Pray for miracles. We're praying for a miracle in our church, for our people. Bye-bye, take care, God bless, and remember, if you get down on Saturday night, you still got to get up for church on Sunday morning. Bye-bye, take care, see you in a couple of weeks, okay? God bless. I love you, and God loves you. Take care.